So we're going to be looking at reciprocals of functions. So you already know f of x, and this time we're going to be looking at 1 over f of x. The definition is pretty straightforward, and what it means for you is that if you can sketch y equals f of x, you can also sketch y equals 1 over f of x. So every function you've ever run into, an exponential fun function, a cubic function, a sine function, you'll be able to deal with the reciprocal of those. 1 over e to the x, 1 over a cubic function, 1 over sine x, let's say. Um, now, it's useful to sort of think of these functions as opposites, although they don't always behave in opposite ways. Uh, but that is a sort of a useful kind of way to think about things. Now, what's actually happening with a reciprocal function? Let's look at a function and just talk about its reciprocal for a moment. So the green function here is f of x equals x squared, a quadratic that you're very familiar with. Now, g of x is the reciprocal of that. It's 1 over what f of x was, which is x squared. So it's 1 over x squared. And there's our red function. Now, remember what a function is. You put in x values and it spits out y values. So with our quadratic, if we put in 1 for x, it spits out 1 for y. If we put 2 in to f of x equals x squared, we get 4. If we put 3 in, we get 9. If we put 4 in, we get 16. And if we put negative 1, we'll still get 1. If we put negative 2, we'll get 4. If we put negative 3, we'll get 9. And if we put negative 4, we'll get now, what does the reciprocal function do? Well, now it takes each of those values that f of x spat out and it puts them on the bottom of the fraction, 1 over whatever the value is. So we can think of it as like a two step process. We're putting 1 in to the function f of x and it's spitting out 1. And then we put that thing that it spat out on the bottom of our function here. So 1 over 1 will be 1. And you can see that we get this point where they're intersecting, right? Now here, we put 2 into the green function and we get 4. Now if we put that 4 into g of x, we get 1 over 4, which is 1 quarter. And if we put 3 into our green function, which is x squared, we get 9. And if we put that 9 into our red function, we get 1 over 9, which is 1 9. And so you can see that as this increases, our denominator increases, which means that our function gets smaller and, or our y value for our reciprocal function gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you think about that two-stage process, whatever that y value is of our original function, it gets put into the bottom of the fraction on our new function. That's a really good way to think about things able talking about key points of f of x and the key points of 1 over f of x because the key points correspond to each other but they're kind of a little bit different sometimes they're a little bit the same and we're going to talk about two that are a little bit the same now looking at our original function here you can see that our quadratic is always above the x-axis and you can see that our reciprocal function is always above the x-axis now if i were to uh, subtract say 2 from our original function all right we get something pretty wacky here but ignore that for a moment um, you can see that when the green function is above the x-axis the red function is 2 and when the green function is below the x-axis the red function is 2 and here when the green function is above the x-axis the red function is 2 so in that way they have something in common. We can say that where f of x is above the x-axis, 1 on f of x is also above the x-axis. And similarly, if f of x is below the x-axis, then 1 over f of x is also below the x-axis. Let's look at another property. Look at the intercepts of f of x. There's an intercept here and an x-intercept here. Now look at the reciprocal function. It's heading off into space there. It's heading off or heading down into space there, it's heading off into space there, it's heading down into space there. I can show that a little more fully. At those points, what we have is a vertical asymptote. So if f of x has an x intercept, we'll have a vertical asymptote at, asymptote at 1 over f of x. And it's not hard to understand why. Um, if you have an x intercept, that means that at 
um, at that point, f of x equals zero. Now, if we put zero on the bottom of a fraction, we get one divided by zero. And if you divide by zero, it's undefined and you end up with an asymptote. So that means wherever f of x has an x-intercept, you can be certain that 1 over f of x will have a vertical asymptote. And you can think about x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes as being opposites in this case. Next one, I've just changed my function a little bit. It has a local maximum here, and it has a local minimum here. Now let's consider those particular points. And let's look at our reciprocal function. All right, now it's a little bit hard to see because reciprocal functions get really hectic because you start dividing by large numbers quite quickly. But look at the point A here, look at the point B here. I'm just going to drop a line there so we can take a closer look at this. Drop some orange lines here. Let's zoom in. All right, zooming in. Now remember, our red line is our reciprocal function. And you can see that... Here, there is a local minimum, and here, there is a local maximum. And it's a little harder to see here, but I can use my turning point tool here. And it should spit out a turning point right about there. Turning point there, turning point there. So where we have a local minimum, we'll have a local maximum for our reciprocal function. And where we had a local maximum, we're going to have a local minimum for our reciprocal function. In that way, there are opposites. So we'll have maximums and minimums in our f of x and our 1 on f of x, but they will be swapped over. Let's talk about increasing and decreasing functions. So this is uh, e to the x here, the green one, and it's going up here. And you can see it's an increasing function. As we go along from left to right, it gets higher and higher and higher and continues to get higher and higher and higher. It doesn't matter what scale we do this at, it is an increasing function. Now, for all increasing functions or for any portion of a function where it is increasing, the reciprocal will be decreasing. All right. Now, it's not that it's like a mirror image. That's not what's happening here. As this one increases, this one decreases. And it doesn't matter what kind of function we're dealing with. For instance, in this function, it's increasing from here to here. So we would expect the reciprocal function to be decreasing from there to there. It's decreasing from here to here, so we'd expect a reciprocal function to be increasing from there to there. And it's increasing from, from here onwards, so we'd expect the reciprocal function to be decreasing. Let's hope I'm right. All right, so you can see the reciprocal function is decreasing, and it's decreasing. There's an asymptote in the middle, but it's definitely decreasing from there to there and decreasing from there to there. From here onwards, it's increasing, and then there's an asymptote, and then it's increasing. So it's definitely increasing while this function is decreasing. And then finally, while this function is increasing, this one is decreasing. Opposite. You can also keep looking at this function, this cubic function I've got here. Now, from 2 onwards, it's heading off into space and it's not coming back down again. It's um, approaching infinity. You can say that as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. Now, if a function is approaching infinity, then its reciprocal function will be approaching zero. We have an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, passing through here. This red function is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, and it is not touching zero. So as the green function gets closer and closer to infinity, the red function gets closer and closer to zero. Now, it's important to talk about positive or negative infinity. Because this green function is heading off to positive infinity there, uh, which means that it is approaching zero from above. Okay, it's coming from above and approaching zero that way. Now, if I were to just swap this function over a little bit, like this. Now, that green cubic function is now approaching negative infinity as x approaches infinity. And you can see that our red function is approaching zero from below. As it approaches in uh, positive infinity, it approaches zero from above. If f of x approaches negative infinity, then 1 over f of x approaches zero from below. Finally, we can do the opposite of that. If the original function is approaching zero, you can see I've got a decay function here with uh, 
asymptote here, then what will happen to the reciprocal function? Well, it will start approaching positive infinity. And similarly, if my original function is approaching zero, but from below, approaching zero, but from below, then my reciprocal function will be approaching inf negative infinity. So original function approaches zero from above, um, the reciprocal will approach positive infinity, and original function approaches zero from below, the original function will approach negative infinity. Now, it's important to keep all of this kind of uh, segmented in your mind a little bit, connect it to some old stuff. So make sure that you sort of, make sure that you highlight this table correctly. Now, obviously these bottom four are all related to each other, and you can see that this and this and this and this line up and this these two and these two line up. So approach is positive infinity, approach is zero, or vice versa. Um, you can see that these two line up in a very clear sort of opposites way, and so do these two. Now going straight to the top, above the axis, above, below, below, sort of the only one here that where they aren't opposites of each other, they're the same as each other. And anywhere you see an x-intercept, you'll expect to see a vertical asymptote with your reciprocal. Cliff Notes version of this is as follows. Functions will both be on the same side of the x-axis, above, above, below, below. X-intercepts become asymptotes. Maxes and mins swap. A function increasing or decreasing over an interval swaps and approaching infinity becomes approaching zero. So those five things here, that's just the sort of slimmed down version of our big table there. Time to get cracking.